Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, sorry about the light shining back there. I'm sitting in the back of my van, getting ready to head out for a bike ride. I'm doing a shakedown on my gravel bike, which is actually there, but you can't see it uh, today. And then afterwards, I'm going over to check out some tools at Harbor Freight. I'm interested in their grinder. I need an eight inch grinder to help me with uh, some things I'm planning to do. So if you watched my last vlog, you saw the book I was reading. And so I'm getting a little more serious about this. I've got a couple of frame designs I want to try and I just want to try it. I just want to see what it's like to make a bicycle frame. So that is something I'm slowly working up to, but I do have a couple small tools I want to buy. And one of them is a bench grinder and I need this for other things too so it's not just a, a tool I'm buying for bike frame building but I'm gonna need it for other stuff so today that's what we're gonna do uh, so I'm gonna get on this uh, bike ride first I, I have a bigger ride planned tomorrow and I haven't ridden my gravel bike if you can see it back there anyway we'll, we'll check it out here I haven't ridden it in a while and it has some interesting features on it it has Campy Shifters and Shimano GRX drivetrain. I did a bunch of videos on this. So if you're, if you're looking to do a Campy Shimano GRX drivetrain, I did a video series on this. And uh, I'll put a card somewhere or a link down. You guys can check that out if, if you're into it. I will be using clipless pedals. I'm going with the mountain bike pedals today. I know some of you noticed that I was riding with flat pedals on my other bike. I like switching back and forth because I like flat pedals just for the comfort of the shoes and the casual feel that I have when I ride. But uh, I'm going to ride with these. These are mountain bike shoes, so we'll do the mountain bike thing, uh, mountain bike shoes today with this bike. So this video is uh, out of order. If you watched my last video, you know that the van broke down. And I was originally planning to post this video first, but before I posted it, the van broke down. And so now I have to change the conclusion to this video. So if you stay to the end, I will update you on the latest. And then in another video coming up in the future, we're going to look and see what's going on with this van in case any of you out there are interested. Uh, so stick to the end and find out what I'm going to do uh, differently or what I'm going to do now. So even though I'm wearing a sweater right now, it's actually not that cold out here. I could take it off, but I'm trying to keep this ride really mellow. Just want to feel out the bike. So far, it's feeling really good. This bike is really, really nice. The uh, tires I have on here are 44 millimeter wide Rene Earth tire. I do have tubes. I was running these tubeless, but it just didn't hold up very well, so I decided just to go, to go back to tubes. Um, these are the standard casings, and for whatever reason, they just never really held their pressure. And I was constantly dealing with tubeless issues, so. Went back to tubes and, you know, it's okay. I do have a Continental gravel tire for this bike that sets up tubeless really, really well. But they're 50 millimeters wide. And for tomorrow's ride, I think it's a little overkill. I could certainly use them, but I just don't want to go through the trouble of setting them up tubeless again. So, these uh, DT Swiss hubs are really nice. These are the uh, 350s, so they're the, the cheapest ones, but they're still really good. And it has the uh, ratcheting, or the, uh, the uh, I forgot what it's called, but it's a special free, free hub. It's not the Paul style, it's the kind of star, it's like a disc with teeth on it, I forgot what they call it. But um, that's, the, that's what the free hub is, it's very smooth, very quiet. Yeah, so good hubs overall. 
and they do have a seal on the bearings which helps to keep the dirt out so I think these will be good for you know mixed terrain riding on this bike and the shifting is working fantastic so can't complain so there I have been riding now for about 40 minutes and I am 10 miles in on this ride I believe and I think I'm warmed up enough to have a sense of the saddle height now I set this based on the bike fitting I got years and years ago um, so I measured it from the bottom the center of the bottom bracket to the saddle but the saddle here has quite a bit of a curve in it this is not a totally flat saddle like my other one so I think I measured it to this the low spot here and I want to lower it down about a half a centimeter uh, and I think that should be really good it felt pretty good but it felt just a little higher than I normally like so I'm gonna drop it down about a half a centimeter all right well let's give that a try I went down about three quarters of a centimeter you might be wondering you know well why don't you just mark it and why is the saddle not where it should be well I switch saddles around on my bikes quite often I use certain saddles for certain kinds of riding and other saddles for other kinds of riding different widths and stuff so nothing is exact you can't just use the same saddle same seat you know you can't use a different saddle different seat post and then expect the height exact to be the exact same so that's partly why I like to switch things around plus I don't have the setback in the exact same spot as I had the other saddle on here so the bike is riding pretty well uh, and I think it's gonna be ready for tomorrow I had to nudge the saddle down a few millimeters I went down too far the first time and then brought it back up and so I feel like it's in a good spot okay back now from our ride just a quick one 18 miles uh, and I don't know it was like 550 feet so pretty flat all good the bike worked fine the I got the saddle I think fit just about perfect uh, it's got a different shape to it so I you know it's not the my favorite saddle overall but it's one of my better ones so I decided to keep it on for tomorrow's ride but um, all right so I'm gonna just uh, get out of these sweaty shorts oh, I didn't actually sweat but get out of these sweaty shorts and uh, go over to Harbor Freight and check out some cool tools all right here we are the land of possibilities going inside the Harbor Freight what will we find in this treasure hunt okay we have found the power tools section here oh, I don't see it here oh huh. interesting a couple of belt sanders here bandsaw Pretty nice looking bandsaw actually, this one. Although I don't see bench grinders. Let's see, did I pass it? They sell lathes here. You can get a lathe for $383. I was also thinking about one of these things. This one looks, this is pretty big actually. It looks well made, but pretty power, pretty big and pretty heavy. So let's go over here. Okay, we found them. 
Uh, this was the one I was looking at, but I'm not sure. It seems pretty well made. Uh, the the housing, the the guards are pretty thick. Um, unlike this one. Real thin steel. This one, this is pretty flimsy here, and I don't see the tool rests like these. These tool rests feel pretty sturdy. I think this would be pretty good actually. They just don't have, I don't see the little tool rest here on this display. The uh, cheaper version of the bench grinder looked like it was okay. Oh yeah, well before I go on to that, the Hercules, the one thing I didn't like about it was the switch. It's this like plastic switch on there and hmm, I don't know, it just looks like something that's gonna break really easily. That, that was one thing that kind of looks a little suspicious to me. But otherwise, the base looks really sturdy, the body, the motor and everything looks pretty sturdy, and then the, the discs, and the covers for the disc look very sturdy. But the switch looks a little cheap. So I'm worried about that. Now if you go down to the cheaper one, which was like $100, also an eight inch bench grinder, that one had really thin metal covers over the disc. And uh, as you can see where, where the tool rest mounted to that, it's really flimsy. So you're, you know it's gonna move around a little bit. I was also checking out the uh, little Dremel type tools, but I'm gonna have to put that on hold now until I fix this van. I don't know what all is going to need to do that and how much I'm gonna have to spend to fix this thing. So the bench grinder is on hold for now. And I just bought a new battery for the van. It, it wasn't the problem, but I needed to get one anyway. The battery in here is from 2007 and it's now 2023. So the cranking amps are really low. It's not holding a very, uh, it does, you know, the capacity has dropped at least below 50%. So it's just, it needed to be replaced and I, it set me back about 200 bucks. So that was sort of my budget for the bench grinder. And we're going into the holidays and it's also going to be Miss Cool's birthday. Her birthday happens to ha uh, be around the same time of Christmas. So. Unless Miss Cools has a, a bench grinder on her Christmas wish list, um, I'm not going to be able to pick one up uh, right now. So that's going to give me some time to do more research. I'm going to check out the uh, Jet brand that's out there and the Delta. Those are two brands that I've you know known about that are generally good quality. And then there's a couple others that are at places like Home Depot where they're Maybe not to the level of a Jet or a Delta, but they might be might be pretty good too. So I'm gonna keep an open mind on this and come back to this probably not until next year after the holidays. Uh, so that's coming, but it's gonna take me a while. And then as far as the van, I think what I'll do is I'm gonna work on it a little bit here. And we're gonna talk about this a little bit more in the next video for those of you who are interested in and kind of what, what the saga of the van is and hopefully we'll figure out what's wrong with it.